Before you start, make sure you have all the resources downloaded and you have set up your MongoDB environment as per our first tutorial. See link in the description and also the link that just popped up. Welcome back to our third tutorial in Mongo and NiFi series. So in the previous two, we talked about how we can read data from MongoDB and how we can insert, update and delete data from MongoDB. In our third chapter, we're going to talk about Mongo GridFS. How can NiFi interact with Mongo GridFS? Before we jump in, what is GridFS? It's a specification for storing and retrieving files that exceed 16 megabytes. So instead of storing the files as a single, doc sing simple document that make a reference to them, GridFS divides the file into parts or chunks and store each chunk on a separate document. By default, the default chunk size is 255 kbytes. Let's jump into the flow. See here. And let's see what we're going to do. Once you get in the process group, you got to make sure that we have this variable set. There's a variable called repo path. This repo path carries a value to the location where the media is going to be placed and exist. So if you go into your repository, in the NIFI and MongoDB folder, we have a folder called media. And that's the path that you need to pass into your property. Let's go ahead and start. So let's describe what we're going to do. We're going to add one file to the GridFS. Uh, the way we do it, first we're going to list the files in that location and then fetch them. So let's run the list and then the fetch. And now we can see that we successfully fetched that file, which is 6.9 megabytes. Next, let's go over the put GridFS properties. As in the previous tutorial, we talked we have the local MongoDB controller services um that we use for the client service the database that we're going to write against but in this case we don't have a collection we have the name of the bucket we're going to write to and the file name that the bucket will use to store the data we're not going to we're not going to set any file properties prefix and we're not going to enforce uniqueness and the chunk size is going to stay at 256 we're not going to change that value so let's go ahead and run the put create fs and we can see that he wrote with success. Let's go into our studio back. We can see now we have a new bucket created. And along with the bucket, we get two collections, one from the chunks and one for the files. Now we can query the GridFS. So in this example, we can generate the flow file and we're going to use the fetch GridFS processor. This one takes same properties as in the past where we have the controller set, we have the controller service that mongodb database name the bucket name that we're going to look for this file from and we're not going to use a query nor or nor we're going to put the incoming flow into an attribute and the operation mode is going to be full query fetch we have two options here we have stream query results or full query fetch for this example we're going to use the full query fetch so we fetch the result we're going to store this into our out media out folder so let's go ahead and we can see that we don't have anything in this file, in this folder. And we're going to leave the rest the same. Let's run it once and we can see that we had a success. If we're going to go and visit, we can see that the file was written. Now let's go ahead and open the file. Let's find out where we are. So we are in media out. We do an LFLA. Let's open this file. And we can see that the file has been opened with success. All right, so this wraps up our how to write and read data from MongoDB GridFS. In the next tutorial, we're going to go and cover how we can enrich a data flow or how can we can enrich data in transit using MongoDB and Apache NiFi.